I swear I could just ramble about this book for the entire day, but nobody wants to hear that. Uh, everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my July wrap up for 2021 part 2. I read a total of 11 books this month but one of them was a textbook that I had to read for my college course front to back so you know I was adding it to my Goodreads goal but nobody wants to hear about that so I'm only going to be talking about 10 books this month. The first five that I read were featured in part one of this wrap up so if you're interested in checking out those books then I'll leave that linked down below Low, but these are the final five books that I read for the month so without further ado let us get started wow. the first book I have is such a quiet place by Megan Miranda I ended up giving this four out of five stars this follows the residents of Hollow's Edge which is a quiet little neighborhood the neighbors all used to be very friendly with one another. That was until the murder of Brandon and Fiona Truitt. The murderer was none other than Ruby Fletcher. All of the neighbors conspired together in order to get her convicted. But now, 14 months after her conviction, Ruby is released from jail and waltzes back into everybody's lives. She returns to her old home as the roommate of Harper Nash, who is quite horrified that she is back as she is probably the reason why Ruby ended up convicted during the trial. Ruby is determined to figure out who the true murderer is in the neighborhood and everybody is a suspect on her list and it's the story of that. This was a fun mystery thriller. It was definitely slow burn. It did take me a while to get through but the conclusion was rather satisfying because I didn't see it coming. I liked how nobody in this book could be trusted. Every single neighbor had some form of motive that could be turned into a reason why they murdered the Truett. So you never really knew who was actually a suspect and who was just, you know, kind of bitter about life. The tension between these neighbors were so high and it was interesting to see why people were framing Ruby for the murder. I think that the biggest complaint I probably had about the book was that a lot of the characters were very similar to one another so it was a little bit difficult to distinguish the neighbors from one another but it was still really enjoyable. I had fun reading it so four out of five stars. The next two books are actually part of the same graphic novel series. The first one is called OK Witch. The second one is called The OK Witch and The Hungry Shadow. These are both by Emma Steinkellner. I gave them both three out of five stars. The first book follows 13 year old Moth Hush who has always been drawn to everything witchy. When the school bullies try to ruin her Halloween, her powers kick in and she discovers that she is actually the descendant of very powerful witches and that Founders Bluff, the town that she lives in, has a very dark past and it's the story of that. This one focuses a lot on self-discovery, family, and forgiveness. I think that those topics were explored very well in this. I really liked the mother-daughter relationship in this. Her mother is very protective over her and it truly shows how much she cares about her. Mr. Laszlo is probably my favorite character in this series. He is a talking cat and he is just a lot of fun. He's definitely like the comic relief in this book. I think that the art style is really well done. It definitely matches with the aesthetic of the overall book. I can show you some of it in the second book. I don't actually have a copy of the first book but it's just very colorful and just very simple and I think it does a really great job in telling the story. Of Moth. And then in this second one, Moth obviously knows that she is now a witch, but she is still constantly being bullied by her peers at school. Things get worse when her mother starts to date the dorkiest teacher at the school, and when the opportunity to borrow a magical charm from her grandmother arises, she takes the charm. This charm has the ability to allow you to be more confident and cool, basically a better version of yourself. So that's what Moth does. She uses this charm and things go a little bit crazy from there. Similar to book one, this focuses on self-discovery and realizing that it's okay to be different from everybody else. The book actually begins with a recap of the first book. So if you didn't want to read the first book, you could definitely pick up the second book, no problem. 
poem and still understand the context behind everything. I did enjoy the social commentary of this book and I think that it was handled very well. Mr. Laszlo is still my favorite character in this book, although Mr. Gorgar, the dorky teacher, is a close second. He was just adorable in my opinion. Also still a big fan of the art style and colors used like I said previously for the first book but overall I think that this is a series that a lot of middle graders will be able to relate to. You know self-discovery is something that's gonna happen in your middle school years so I definitely think that this is a good book to have for your pre-teens, you know? But yeah, I gave them both three out of five stars. They were cute for what they were. The next book I have is another graphic novel. This one's more up my alley. I gave it five out of five stars because I am just obsessed with this series. It is The Adventure Zone. This is the third installment to the adult graphic novel. It is called Petals to the Metal. It is actually based off of a podcast by the McElroy brothers and their dad, which is basically just them playing Dungeons and Dragons, and then they record themselves talking about it. It features three unlikely heroes, Taco the elf wizard, Meryl the dwarf cleric, and Magnus the human fighter, I guess you want to call him. In this installment, they have to defeat the raven, who is a very talented thief who is under the control of a grand relic, which causes her to wreak havoc on the city of Goldcliff. They have to work together with Hurley, who is a battle racer, in order to save the raven before it's too late. Like I said, I just love these good boys so much. Taco is as sarcastic as ever. Meryl uh, talks dirty to plants in this and it is the most hilarious thing in the entire world and I'm not really sure why it's so funny. I think it's just because I love him so much and Magnus is still the epitome of a golden retriever in a human body. He's definitely my favorite out of the three but honestly they're all pretty close in my heart. I love them all. This one also introduces some new characters. We get Hurley and Sloane as well as Geral who is a freaking unicorn and he is just majestic and wonderful and I love him. I really liked the way that Hurley and Sloane's relationship was portrayed in this. I think it was really well done. I also love the ending. I think that the battle races were also really cool to see on page. I also just am obsessed with this art style and the colors that they use and how expressive these characters are. I just find these panels to be so interesting to look at and I spend so much time just examining every single picture because there's easter eggs like thrown in. I definitely recommend this adult graphic novel. Keep in mind it is definitely adult. There's a lot of swearing, there's a lot of like <laughs> rude comments and sexual innuendos but it's a lot of fun. I love it and um, yeah, I just think that everybody needs to read it because I'm obsessed with it and not enough people have read it so I can't talk about it to literally everybody because they have no idea what I'm talking about. So please pick up this book. If you take anything from this video, read The Adventure Zone or listen to the podcast. They're both great. Okay, and then the final book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up, I still am very confused about. It is Star Eater by Kirsten Hall. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but like I said, I am so confused about how to explain this book to you guys. So it basically follows Alfreda Ron, who is an acolyte for the Sisterhood, which is basically nuns who live on a floating piece of land in the sky. When her mother dies very young, unexpectedly, her whole world is turned upside down. When a rogue nun convinces her to spy for her in exchange for not having to participate in the next renewal, it thrusts her into the hierarchy of the sisterhood. Like I said, I'm not even really sure how to describe this book. It's both unique and very disturbing at the same time. The magic system is definitely the most intriguing part of the book, but also the most confusing part. These sisters eat their dead mother's flesh in order to produce lace, which is like, like lace from a spider, like, you know, Spider-Man. They make weapons out of this lace. It's very confusing, but so intriguing. The renewal system is also very creepy, and I did not enjoy reading about it. It's basically a sacrificial ceremonial raping of convicts which causes them to turn into haunts which is basically zombies that these sisters create by having sex with them which gives them an STI and then once 
they have this STI, they go like feral, and then they push them off the side of the cliff of the floating city that they live on. Like I said, very confusing, and it's because all of the sisters are bisexual or lesbians, but they have to keep the bloodline going. I just, I don't know how to feel about it, <laughs> you know? But the sisters can also create haunts just by being in close proximity to a male. Like, they don't actually have to have sex with them, but they do have sex with them so that they can keep the bloodlines going. I don't know. It's, it's very confusing and really weird. Honestly, a lot of this book was just confusing, but you just keep reading because you're like, what the heck is happening and what's gonna happen next? I need to know, but also I don't want to know, but I do want to know. I actually listened to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did a really good job with the story, especially in the more like disturbing parts. They were very nonchalant with their reading, which made it even creepier. And I think that just the whole like aesthetic of the book is just creepy, <laughs> but you just want to keep reading. It's like one of those train wrecks that happen, but you have to keep watching because you're like, oh my god, the train is crashing. What's gonna happen next? The fire? Who knows? That's what this book is. It was interesting, but very confusing. So I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars because I still don't really know how to feel about it. But if you read this book, please tell me what happened because I, I'm still... still confused. Alright everybody, so that was my wrap up for July 2021 part 2. I'll leave the link to the first wrap up down below if you're interested in the first 5 books that I read and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!